fabulous people, welcome to Bruges. If you plan on traveling to Belgium, then this Bruges travel guide is definitely for you. Today, I'll share with you how to spend the most perfect day in Bruges. Everything from what to do in Bruges to where to taste the best chocolate and beer. Now, before we begin, please remember to smack that like button. And if you're new to my channel and my vibe, and the vibe of this channel resonates with you, I invite you to subscribe. All right, fabulous people, now let's go explore Bruges. Bruges is one of Europe's best preserved cities. In fact, its entire historic center has been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is a place that truly lives and breathes history. With its iconic cathedrals and bell towers, winding canals and cobble streets, you'll feel like you traveled back in time to the Middle Ages. Let's begin our visit to Bruges with one of the absolute top things to do in Bruges, visiting the Church of Our Lady. Standing at nearly 400 feet tall, it's the second highest brick tower in the world. No wonder when you look up anywhere in town, you'll be able to spot it right away. Dating back to the 13th century, inside of this Gothic structure, you'll encounter a world full of artistic treasures. One important piece of information that you need to know is that the entrance to the church is free. But if you want to see all the incredible works of art, I strongly recommend for you to purchase a ticket to the museum. It is only 8 euros, but honestly guys, everything that you get to see here is priceless. The rich church interior contains paintings by master painters of Flanders in the Renaissance era, 13th and 14th century painted crypts, the ceremonial tombs of Duchess Mary of Burgundy and her father Charles the Bold, and of course, the absolute highlight, Michelangelo's marble Madonna and child, his only statue sent out from Italy while he was still alive. As you continue exploring, another attraction in Bruges that is an absolute must-see is the Belfry of Bruges, the 272 feet high tower from the 13th century. Those of you who will climb the 366 steps will be rewarded with an impressive view of Bruges and its surrounding areas. My only recommendation is to get tickets online ahead of time, as they are often sold out. As lunchtime was fast approaching, I wanted to share with you some of the food in Bruges you simply cannot skip. That, of course, includes mussels, fries or frites, and croquettes that come either with cheese or shrimp. But my absolute favorite is Flemish stew, with pieces of beef cooked in beer to the perfection. All right, fabulous people, now let me share with you some practical tips when it comes to travel in Bruges. Number one, if you're staying in Brussels, Bruges is a very easy day trip to organize. All you have to do is to hop on a train and in about an hour and a half, you will find yourself here. Number two, you will not need a lot of cash in Bruges. For most of the things, you will be able to pay with a card and even leave a tip on a card, which is still impossible in some of the European countries. Also, please keep in mind that Bruges is small, so it can easily be explored in one day. But if you do decide to stay overnight, like I did, I strongly recommend going for a hotel. There are lots of excellent options for any budget and way more choices than with Airbnb. Our next stop on things to do in Bruges list is St. John's Hospital. Dating back to the mid-12th century, this is one of the oldest hospitals in Europe and one of the sites in Bruges you definitely cannot miss. With an 800-year-old history of caring for pilgrims, travelers, sick and poor, here you can find the impressive collection of medical instruments, artworks and learn about the hospital life of the past. The outside area and the beautiful herb garden are also well worth a visit. The Basilica of the Holy Blood is another must-see in Bruges. This 12th century Roman Catholic Basilica houses an ampulla that is said to contain a cloth stained with the actual blood of Christ. 
As you enter the chapel, you cannot help but to notice stunning stained glass and wall paintings that tell a story of the church. If you look closely, you can also discover the pictorial representation of the journey of the holy blood relic from Jerusalem to Bruges. Kept in the basilica, it is presented to the faithful during the Friday Eucharist. Right next to the Basilica of the Holy Blood, you'll find Bruges City Hall, one of the oldest in the Low Countries. It is from here that the city has been governed for over 600 years. Even today, it is still the beaten political heart of the city and the place where Bruges City Council holds its monthly meetings. Now, of course, you cannot visit Bruges without embracing its unique beer scene. As soon as you arrive, you'll find yourself surrounded by numerous bars, beer tastings and tours. This place is a true paradise for beer lovers. From joining the most famous Bruges brewery tour at the Half Men to enjoying beer tasting at the iconic To Be Bar, my only suggestion is to embrace it all and possibly not to have much scheduled for the rest of the afternoon. And of course, your day trip to Bruges cannot be complete without visiting the Beguinage. Founded in the 13th century and separated by a large wall from the rest of the city, this place feels like a small village where time has completely stopped. The Beguinage was a place of refuge for unmarried women and widows who found a new meaning to life in the religious community. Beguinage were less strict than monasteries, therefore Begin could renounce the vow and leave the court at any time to resume a secular life. The Beguinage in Bruges is open daily and it is free to visit, except for a small museum on site. Surrounded by idyllic whitewashed brick houses and greenery, this is an ideal place for you to take a break from all the sightseeing in Bruges. Before you continue your Belgium travel, there is one more thing that you absolutely must do in Bruges. Taste some of its best chocolate. But with all the choices, you might be wondering which one. In my opinion, it's no other than Neuhaus, the inventor of the Belgian praline. For over 100 years, all Neuhaus chocolates have been made entirely in the atelier in Brussels, and the result is unlike anything you've ever tasted before. If you want to visit one of its iconic stores and learn more about this legendary chocolate maker, then check out my video on Brussels, Belgium. All right, fabulous people, thank you so much for watching this Bruges vlog. Now, before you go and start packing for Belgium, please remember to smack that like button. And if you're new to my channel and my vibe, and the vibe of this channel resonates with you, I invite you to subscribe. And I truly hope to see you all in my next video.